You heard him smear my body up with butter, butter, <laughs> and take me to the Freaker's Ball. Well, you're there. You're here. This is the Freaker's Ball. It's Friday night, April 24, 2020. How the hell y'all doing out there, Freakers? Freaks of all description. Welcome to the show. Uh, we are going to do our regular show. Nothing new, nothing different. Well, maybe something new. Maybe something different. I don't know. Anyway, welcome to the Freakers Ball there. And uh, we're, we're glad to have you here along with us. All of those, you, all of you that are here. <laughs> I can almost talk. All of you that are here on reallibertymedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page or on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia. Of course, if you're tuned in on the audio stream, which is also quite available, uh, from rlnradio.xyz, it's on freedomsnetwork.com, it's on realliberty.org. Welcome to you all as well, and and uh, certainly welcome to the Moose Girl. <laughs> Hola. Hola, how are you, Miss Moose? Hanging in there. Well, that's good to hear. Yep. Yep, yep, better than not hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, anyway, how do you all the all the folks in the chat here? We got all kinds of great folks here. Who do I see chatting? I see free enslaved. I see Mister Meister Meister Moosterbrow, and you and I there, uh, Moose Girl and Grim there. Hansel, hey Hansel, how are you doing? You crazy Hansel? <laughs> <laughs> Benoit and Sock Puppet. I saw Kate chatting it up earlier. Uh, in the cyborg noodle, uh, who, who am I missing here? I, I seen, I think, uh, uh, Frumpy and uh, and and, and uh, Asmo, 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 uh, JJ from St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, JJ, and uh, who else did I see? Uh, Rome's Rob. Uh, trust no one. I don't know if Rob works is hanging around. He's probably out of there somewhere. Yeah, all, all y'all that are there in the chat chatting, howdy. <laughs> howdy. Yeah. So, ah. oh, and we got a we got a bubbler being fired up. All right then, Thank that you, will work. Thank you, Mister Works. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, anything new or exciting in the land of Eau Claire? Not really. Um, the golf courses are able to be open, but you can't use the golf cart. Why? And you can't Why? Wait, touch wait, wait, wait. the stick. You can't touch the the stick thing. The what? The flag? Yeah. Uh, why not? I don't know. It, it, I don't know. And why? And why? Like, why even bother opening them? Because you know you can't really play golf. I mean, I will, a lot of I, people play, can't can't walk to eighteen holes. They have to use a cart. Well, what, what's wrong with the cart? Does the cart have Corona on it? Germs. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. They're worried about the spread of the virus. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't get how a cart is going to increase the spread of the virus. Because if they rent them out, you know, I don't know. I, I would think they could clean them or somehow. You know, it, it doesn't even. Is is the nineteenth hole open? No, I'm sure not. So no no bars no, are open. No drinking after your game. No hell no. Uh, not here, Kate. I even saw a thing just before. Um, Only the show one that said uh, <laughs> one person to a cart. You bastards you are walking. How is my cart? Yeah, <laughs> you can't use the cart. A cart. Wow, that's crazy. So yeah, crazy. it's like okay. So yeah. only certain people can golf. Okay. Well, yep. uh, here in New Mexico, the uh, governor um, extended uh, the uh, lock-up order. So you got to stay mm -hmm. in pri got to stay in prison until at least the uh, fifteenth of May. It was supposed to be April thirtieth, but now when it gets towards the fifteenth of May, I'm sure it'll go further. Uh, but certain places, certain cities, uh, like Grants, for example, said, screw you, Governor, we're opening on Monday. Uh, oh, nice. Okay. 
Uh, now, now that you got you know all the idiot moron lawyers saying, oh, well, that could land him in big trouble. He could, he could be in a criminal charge. Fuck you. Take me to court over that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, seriously, no kidding. <laughs> this governor had no, uh, does not, no governor, or any governor, any no. government, does not have the right to shut down all these businesses. It's just, no. it, it, they don't have the right. So, um, uh, it's yeah. been going on yeah. so, too long. So we'll see what happens on, on Monday out there in the city of Grant. And, you know, he, he didn't tell people, go do your business. He said, you can go do your business. If you so decide, and if your employees decide to come work for you, that's up to them too. This is, right. you know, uh, we're we never we never told anybody to run a business or not to run a business, and we're not going to start now. And if the governor says no, too bad, so sad. This is my town. <laughs> right. So seriously, th- this is ridiculous. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens there, uh, but, but uh, you know, she's a big lefty governor, so. Uh huh. Um, Apparently, she's on the, the list for Biden VB, VP picks. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's not going to be bold well for any Democrat. No, no. Biden's not going to win. He's he's out of his mind. He's out to lunch. He is totally out to lunch. He, I he, mean, seriously. He, he, he went, is he out went, there. He went to lunch, but he forgot his lunch. Yeah, I mean, he seriously is... Hey, where's my lunch? <laughs> out of his fucking mind. Um, so today there was a protest in Madison. I heard, yeah. And in Wisconsin here. Thousands of people showed up. Okay, I, okay, guys, you guys are protesting the lockdown, but by wearing a mask while you're doing your protesting the lockdown... I don't get that at all. I don't get that. Well, like, most of the people that, that are in the pictures I've seen are not wearing a mask. Right. But then you got other people that are. Yeah. You know, not more people are not than are. But seriously? Yeah. Well, when I went to the uh, post office today. There was only one old woman that had a mask on. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the normal old woman that I've seen in there working that works at the post office, working like a traffic cop, make sure. Exactly. What's going They're on there? They're the purpose. Zach's talking. To I know. I can't, I can't. Like these two people, they, they're carrying. Uh, I'll link the story here. Girl. They're uh, carrying, uh, you know, these huge guns. One of the girls pink or blue with flowers on it. But they're wearing masks. I mean, w- w- there's got to be some confusion, okay? <laughs> well, um, yeah. There's got to be some confusion here. Well, it, it's a, there's a little uh, dualistic thinking going on there. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're against the pro- uh, the lockdown because of the virus, but you obviously still think that you're in harm's way because you're wearing a mask. Yeah, they, they call that cognitive dissonance. Yeah, what? I don't get that <laughs> at all. <laughs> you're, you're you're trying to hold on to two separate ideas, two opposing ideas at the same time. Right. And, and it, it really it 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 uh, dry, it'll probably drive her, drive her insane, or whoever they are, her I say, but them insane. Uh, uh, because you can't. Say, uh, I, I mean, you're out there. You're saying, okay, the virus is no big deal. I'm not going to catch it. Open everything back up, mm-hmm. and then and then protect yourself against it. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't get it. It, it doesn't work. Yeah, we don't if need. We, we we don't need any a, face coverings here. No, no. There's face. a sign for golfing rules: six feet apart at all times. Do not touch the flag stick. Rake bunkers with your feet. Call ahead for food and beverages. <laughs> okay. I mean, oh, God. don't touch the flag stick. How are you supposed to play the game? Uh, I mean, come on. Don't, aren't they wearing uh, Aren't they wearing golf gloves or something? Yeah, they usually wear gloves. So there you go. I mean, okay, so <laughs> I mean, I don't one know. guy's got a sign that says, "If a fart." 
can get through underwear and a pair of jeans, how can a mask made of cloth save you? Asking for a friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the sign. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that, that, that bandana ain't going to stop nothing. No. Except, I'm sorry. Know, it, it, it may stop. You, you, it may yeah. stop your spit or something like that, but uh, now and also uh, you know yeah. they they yeah. tried they tried to say that the you know after uh, wherever the person was and breathing that that whatever the air around them it stays in that air for some period of time. That's so, what they said. So if you're if you're six feet behind somebody and you're walking, well, you're still gonna walk through their cloud of whatever. Right. Um, if they coughed. <laughs> or whatever, just breathing, you know. Uh, right. Because apparently that's what they're trying to tell you. Oh, it's so so contagious that somebody breathing, you know, across the street can get you. Uh, yeah. They did it in New Mexico today, too, Grim. Did, did what? Uh, protest. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Um, I think both and, Al- Al- Albuquerque and Santa Fe both. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, you got, oh, my God, this is just, I, I find it very hard to believe that I am a carrier when I have no symptoms whatsoever. ever. Okay? Right. How in the hell does that compute, you guys? Uh, that's, does that's that okay. make any sense to you? No, but that's that's the line they keep spewing out there. Well, 90% of the people don't show any symptoms. And it's just, well, then what's the big deal? Right. <laughs> I, what is the problem? You know? I mean, I'm not coughing. I'm not sick. I don't have a temp. Um, you guys, this is, for them to sit there and go, we're all carriers, basically. That's yeah. basically what they're saying. By saying that statement that, oh, you could have have it and not have the symptoms. You know what? That's bullshit. Right. That is complete bullshit. Yeah. Well, you could be a carrier of it for 14 days, and then you could, while you're doing it during that 14 days, then you could pass it on to other people. Yeah, but guess what? This thing's been going on however long, and right. I have yet to have one fucking symptom. Well, <laughs> seriously, well, not, I am I am not surprised in the slightest. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you did get it, I would be shocked and surprised. But yeah, uh, I mean, seriously, for them to sit there and go, "Well, you got to you got to wear a mask because you could be a carrier," and I even know it, and people buy this. And then they say, "Well, just People because are buying that. just because you had it and got better doesn't mean you're not going to get it again." And it's just like, oh, right? Well, what it's you, like, what, come on! What, what's all this immunity crap I keep hearing about? How you got to use people that got better? You got to use their blood to shoot in other people? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if if they're still going to get it again, then what what good is their blood? Right. What's the point? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> and someone said to me that they're. Hoping for, how do they put it, herd immunity? Yeah, herd immunity, yeah. It's like, are you buying that too? Uh, it, was like, it was like the community spread. It was just like, oh, come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, if you don't have the symptoms, how in the fuck can you have it? That's ridiculous for anyone to believe that. I'm sorry. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Well, but they, 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 that's they... common sense. They 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 would lick your sack, Woody. Except your sack is probably infected. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I, I know. just don't buy it that you can be a carrier of this thing and not show any symptoms. That that just doesn't compute at all. Yeah, all those old people they're they're dying. The, the ones yeah, in the but, nursing homes, yep. But yeah. the, you know, it's already been de- or put out there and, and but, proven. But who knows that they are they are telling pe- doctors. First time in 50 years or whatever, how to fill out a death certificate, and they're saying, they're basically they're saying any death that happens right now is from this virus. Right, yeah. Even if you got hit by a bus, they'd say, oh, coronavirus related. Yep, guy, guy, jumped, out, guy, guy jumped out of a plane and forgot his parachute, hit the ground, boom, coronavirus. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, you know they're being, it, you know they're, 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 mess, they're manipulating the numbers, okay? You know that they're at least doing that. Right, right. They're also, you have Trump up there yesterday saying that people, that they're testing, doing a test to see if some kind of disinfectant can be put into the body. 
to clean the body from the virus. Or shine a bright light up your ass. That'll that'll take care of it. Yeah. It's like and if you can see the lady, if you watch the clip from yesterday where the lady is just uh, Deborah Burks or whatever. Yeah. She is just like stunned. <laughs> and she does the look on her face, it's classic. It's awesome. Uh, and she's looking at him like, What the fuck are you saying? Yeah. Like you have no I mean he did say that. He did say that. Well, he, he, he didn't, he didn't In tell, so many words, he did say that. He, he, he didn't tell people to drink it, but... Uh, no, but he... <laughs> how did... Oh, oh my... He did anyway, say we'll, that. We'll get, to, we'll get to all that. We're going we're gonna to play some yeah, music okay. to kick yeah, it we'll out Yeah, we'll do... We'll, we'll, we'll pull it up <laughs> we for got, you. We got a lot of stories to go the over. The direct quote. I will pull it up for you. Okay. And you... Yeah, okay. Yeah, just... just so, see. everyone... <laughs> All right. All right, we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna start off with some old eighties stuff here for you all. It's gonna be eighties fest. Well the first set is. After that it's not, but <laughs> Oh, enjoy. No, he said it. He I'll I'll pull it up. All right, all right. Maybe not in my exact words, but we'll I'll get the exact thing that he said. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yo, what? Tin roof rusted. <laughs> That's the B-52s there with Love Shack. Before that, we had George Thorogood uh, doing Bad to the Bone and scenes from uh, the movie Christine, the uh, Stephen King film. And we kicked it off with Midnight Oil. Beds are burning. Yep, 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 yep. 80s. Totally 80s. <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> so he did not say to drink bleach. He just said possibly if some kind of disinfectant could be used to do some kind of a cleaning in the body. And, and or a bright light. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, he wanted UV lights. UV lights. Okay, UV light. Yeah. So that's what he said. That's what he said. But then why saw it? put a statement out after he said it saying don't use disinfectants in the body. <laughs> so, and then, I mean, of course, the internet went crazy. Oh, well, of course. Uh, you know, pretty much anything you know, he says. Any, anything any, he says, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. <clears throat> it's, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't even believe people are still even thinking about talking about politics at this point in the game, but they are. They are. Yep. So... Whatever, man. People are nuts. <clears throat> Don't you realize yeah. by now that these politics, it's a rigged game? It's rigged. It's fixed. <laughs> yep, it is. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we got here for you. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of people, people, people in this world. <sighs> All right, so there's this person. So they, I don't really think they gave the person's name. Yeah, I don't think they gave the person's name. All right, so this person was driving along in their car. Driving along by, yeah. them, by themselves in their car. Mm -hmm. Wearing an N95 mask. Who knows how long they were driving. But, mm -hmm. but since all of their expelled gases and breathed in air were in the same little mask there. Uh, they got a little bit too much uh, carbon dioxide. They passed out and crashed the car. <laughs> no, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it's on Yahoo. Uh, here. It says, uh, insufficient oxygen may have caused a crash at a Lincoln Park on Thursday involving a driver who is wearing an N95 mask, according to the Lincoln Park PD. Um, What's that? So they put some weird stuff in here sometimes. According to authorities, police <laughs> responded to a lone occupant single car motor vehicle crash and noted they believed it resulted from the driver wearing an N95 mask for several hours and subsequently passing out behind the wheel due to insufficient oxygen intake. A lone occupant single car uh, motor vehicle crash. Who are you protecting yourself from? 
Who <laughs> are you protecting yourself from? Yourself? <laughs> so, police say they want to remind residents that while masks should be used in public settings to help prevent the spread of corona, uh, they're not necessary outdoors when social distancing can be maintained, and especially not necessary when driving in a vehicle alone. <laughs> right. Hello. <laughs> Stupid. Wow. <laughs> Oh, anyway, <laughs> did I put that out? Oh, wow. It's just, you know, so these are the people voting in your, 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 your people that you have in charge telling you to close all your businesses. People like this are the ones voting those people in. They're, they're so afraid of everything. Yeah, that, that they'll they will come close to, if not totally, kill themselves uh, by ignorance. Uh, it's it's madness, madness, I say. Yeah, it is. It really is. All right, now this one, this is this one is serious. <laughs> in that in that in that that statement that you were talking about, Trump said, and he he also mentioned in there. About sunshine, right? Sunshine? Yeah. Yeah, yep, sun he did. Yeah. So apparently, after Trump said that sunshine is good, mm -hmm. CNN has moved its headquarters underground. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just saw that earlier. I laughed. All right, good. <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Moments after Trump touted the benefits of sunshine sunlight at last night's press conference... CNN announced that news organization would be moving to an underground bunker. Uh, the, the, the news company purchased a decommissioned Cold War bunker nearby. Frantic anchors and hosts scrambled to get underground as quickly as possible, not wanting to be associated with anything Trump said was good. If Trump said the sun is good, we're locking ourselves deep underground, said Brian Stelter, <laughs> wiping tears from his eyes while saying goodbye to the world on the surface. We urge all Americans to the, to do the same. Sun bad, sun bad. Don Lemon was the first to arrive, shoving several interns out of the way as he dove for the doors of the fallout shelter. I hate Trump more than all of you. Ha! He cried. Uh, CNN, has, <laughs> CNN has threatened not to come out until Trump is voted out of office, so we shouldn't see him for another oh twenty or thirty years. Uh, luckily, a uh, hundred feet of concrete above them prevents them from getting any uh, news broadcasts out. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in case you were wondering, uh, folks, that's the Babylon Bee. <laughs> yeah, that entire site. <laughs> that's the Babylon Bee. So yeah. um, they 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 <laughs> they have fun, and I have fun reading their stuff. <laughs> yeah, not always, but some of, most of it's pretty good. Most of it's yeah. pretty good. Um. <laughs> okay, uh, um, I think I think I talked about last week that uh, in the city of New York, uh, they they put out a do not resuscitate. They told all the EMTs and such, don't if somebody's yeah. if somebody's that don't resuscitate these people. Well, apparently they've scrapped that now. Yeah, they rescinded that. They, they said, oh, well, eh, maybe we were being a little harsh. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> on, uh, so from the same website, AJC.com, uh, the guidelines had been briefly been changed in the midst of corona. Uh, the New York guideline introduced last week that had been meant to ease the burden on the state's emergency rooms has been rescinded after public outcry. Uh, <laughs> on the 17th of April, New York implemented an EMS protocol that adult cardiac arrest victims who cannot be resuscitated at the scene will not be transported to a hospital with CPR in progress unless the patient's pulse, pulse or breathing has returned by itself. Um, <laughs> which, huh? All right. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, the guidance, this guidance proposed by physician leaders, physician leaders, they're supposed to do no harm, 
but apparently it doesn't apply if there's a, a national outcry of protect us from the evil disease uh, uh, of the EMS region medical uh, control systems, the state advisory council, uh, in accordance with the American Heart Association guidance and based on standards recommended by the American College of Emergency Physicians and adopted in multiple other states was issued April 17, 2020, at the recommendation of the Bureau of Emergency and Medical Services and reflected uh, nationally recognized minimum standards. However, it added, they don't reflect New York standards, and for that reason, the DOH has ordered them to be rescinded. So, if it weren't for, pub if it weren't for public outcry... They'd still be letting people just drop dead. Right. Now, do you think these people give a damn about your ass? No. 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 No, they certainly, mostly, absolutely do not. I'm sure there are certain individual EMTs out there that said, screw you, um, which I think right. was, was part of the, the public outcry was certain EMTs were saying, I'm doing my job. I don't care what some idiot wrote down on a piece of paper. I'm right. gonna, if I can save this guy, I'm going to save this guy. And I, I, don't, I don't care about your shit, uh, your stupid rules that you're making up here. This is, this, this is, this is just nonsense. So, uh, yeah. All right, here's the, here's, here's the thing from Lysol. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then they got a picture of the Lysol bottle here. Uh, it says, kills 99% of all viruses and bacteria. Well, hell, that's perfect. <laughs> 99 percent uh yeah <laughs> and then they said lysol begs customers not to drink its cleaning products <laughs> right don't do that after, after a trump rant tr trump rant trump don't know rants moosey knows rants trump don't know freaking rants yeah <laughs> lysol is desperately trying to set the record straight uh, Reckett Benixner, whatever, the, the British company behind the cleaning products brand Lysol and Dettol, is urging customers not to consume its cleaning products after, the, after Trump <laughs> su suggested scientists should try to inject corona patients with disinfectants. He, uh, he's, uh, just direct Lysol directly into the blood. Well, you won't have to worry about corona anymore if that's the problem. Um, <laughs> if they do this, we're not making this up. In a statement, the company was forced to reiterate that Lysol wipes should not be on the menu. Lysol wipes? Okay. Uh, what are you, are you supposed to suck on them? All right. As a, as a global leader in health and hygiene products, we, we must be clear that under no circumstances should our disinfectant products be administered into the human body through injection, ingestion, or any other route. Don't shove those wipes up your ass, uh, the company wrote. Well, I added that last part. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trump made a series of mind-boggling claims on Thursday about the about injecting cleaning products. Uh, there were there were kind of questions more than 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 statements, but that's all right. Um, or claims, and even UV light into the human body without basing any of them on any scientific evidence or even common sense. Which it's Trump. How much common sense does he have? All right. And then I see the, the disinfectant where it knocks out. This is Trump's Trump statement here. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in one minute, Trump said, as quoted by <laughs> CNN. Is, is, he asks, is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or almost a cleaning? It would be interesting to check that. It sounds interesting to me. See, he had no idea. He was asking. Is there a way we can do that? It's a delusional statement, they go on to say, but again, it was a question. That may right. well that may well cause some who do not know better morons to put themselves at risk. Read the bottle. The bottle says not for internal ingestion. Yeah. Don't drink this shit. Uh on, on Monday, days before Trump's rant, the US C D C uh, noted the poison center calls related to cleaners and disinfectants were up 20% over last year, 
which is likely related to the fear for corona, of corona. Now, on Monday, days before, days before mm-hmm. Trump said this, people were doing, were poisoning themselves with cleaners, with, with household cleaners. They were. This is, this is, I, I, I mean, <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> just people are just too stupid to live. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what you can say. I, I mean, um, if if somebody's going to listen to some guy, and they, they know he's not, a, he, he's not the sharpest tool in the woodshed. <laughs> and, and if they're gonna take a question that he asks and uh, roll that out into, hey, I need to start drinking Lysol, uh, you know, <laughs> you get what you get. You get what you get at that point. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, I guess you know they're doing some studies or something about that. So apparently. About the UV light. Okay, um, this I, I don't. I'm not sure what to make of this. This, and you can tell me what your thoughts are on it, because I, 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 it, it seems okay. like really, really. So who cares? But you tell me. So coronavirus patients' eyes could be contagious for weeks. Suggest study. That found virus in one woman's pink, pink irritated eyes for 21 days after she was infected. So let's say this woman's eyes or whoever's eyes are are, are contagious. Right. Are people going up and licking her eye? Why? What, what's the deal yeah. here? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not on anyway, from the article here. I guess Daily Mail. Um, uh, reports of pink or red eyes in corona patients emerged in March. Most studies have found 1% or fewer corona patients develop conjunctivitis or pink eye. However, a new piece of research found that one woman still had the virus present uh, in her pink irritated eyes for at least 21 days after symptoms appeared. So hmm. it's... The corona can linger in your eyes for weeks on end, uh, according to this study. Uh, researchers at the National Institute for Infectious Disease in Italy found that the virus persisted in eyes of one 65-year-old woman for 21 days. Uh, reports have emerged, people getting pink eye with corona, um, although corona primarily spreads from person to person via droplets of saliva and mucus from coughing and sneezing. The new study underscores why avoiding touching your face and eyes is crucial to stopping the spread of the disease. Well, if it's in your eye, you've got it. So, yeah, touching your own. Somebody else is not coming up and touching your eye, are they? I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something. Uh, pink eye or conjunctivitis can be caused by many bacteria and viruses. Um, it often comes with respiratory infections. Uh, in the U.S., pink eye first became a corona concern after a nurse at a life care center home in Kirkland, Washington, where the devastating outbreak sickened more than 80 in residents and 34 staff members, killed 35 people. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not seeing how, how this is a problem. I mean, if the person's already got corona and and, and they're, they're infected with it, who cares? Uh, I, right. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't get the. I don't get how that's a a deal. <laughs> but apparently, to them, it is. To somebody, okay. is I, I. I don't know. It, it, it just. It, it just. It, it struck me as odd that that would be something to worry about. Okay. So, yeah, I guess they're worried about if you touch your eye and you have the virus and you touch something else, just like with everything. You know what I mean? Like if you touch your nose or something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, are people actually touching their eye? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not touching, you know, not like directly. Like sometimes I get an itchy eye or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, on the outside, on the lid or whatever. But that's, yeah. 
they didn't they didn't say the lid has they said your eye so whatever I don't know um <laughs> oh, oh okay whatever uh, so anyway <laughs> um, anyway as of yesterday uh, sometime yesterday before before sometime yesterday um, there were there were basically three symptoms three symptoms yes. to coronavirus right. Let's see where's that chart do I have that chart here here it is. Fever, cough, and shortness of breath were the, were the three symptoms. The three main ones, yep. No, that was all the CDC listed. Those are, those are the three symptoms oh, okay. of corona on its website. Fever, mm-hmm. cough, shortness of breath. So now, as of today, you can have, they, they tripled the size of the list. They didn't mean they added six more symptoms. Um, <laughs> so, so if you have chills... Repeated shaking with chills, which seems a little redundant there, but whatever. Um, uh, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, or a new loss of taste or smell. Now, okay, I can maybe understand the loss of taste or smell. Chills, eh, whatever. I, I, people get those for various reasons. But muscle pain, headache, and sore throat. These bother me because... What? I mean, everybody, right. everybody, everybody has these things yes. at, at some point. Everybody gets headaches at some point. Everybody has muscle pain at some point. Sore throats are extremely common. Um, and, yes. And, and oh, I have a sore throat. I must be Corona man. Uh, I, oh I, I, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but they say that was due to healthcare workers started calling attention to many new uh, symptoms. Uh, and uh, in March, the American Academy of what is this word? Otolaryngology. Uh, <laughs> I've seen it. I don't know how to pronounce I, it. I, so. I'm, I'm, I'm going to paste. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post that with this word in the chat, and you <laughs> you can tell me how the freak you say this word. Uh, I don't know how to say that I, word. Otolar. Laryngology. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so the, there's an, apparently an academy for them. Uh, and they called for the CDC to add anonsia, which is the inability to smell. That's not, I didn't say that word right either. Uh, to its list of potential signs of corona. Um, at the time, the WHO, the WHO, uh, said it's investigating a possible link between the two, but the evidence was preliminary. Uh, so... Um, that's I, I I would say you know maybe that's something if if you're having a loss of taste and smell, and then then that's something you might want to look into. Um, says we're reaching out. Eh, never mind, I had a comment, but I'm going to leave that one off to the side. Okay. Not, not say that one. <laughs> Just say there's there's certain people that use hot sauce on all kinds of various stuff. Well, I do too, but um, there's a certain group if you want to look at people in groups that use mm-hmm. hot, hot sauce on more stuff than others. And, and so it's possible that those people have a lesser uh, taste and smell um, functionality in the first place. Anyway. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, so I, I don't know what to make of all this. I mean, it, it sounds like nonsense to me uh, that they're adding headaches, muscle pain, and sore throat to this list. Yeah. Uh, because... Why all of a sudden, too? Yeah, well, yeah, and it's, I mean, you know, you're not getting the numbers you want. You got to bump up right. the numbers. Oh, yep. he's got a sore muscle. Corona. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he, he's got he's got a headache. Corona. No, he was just listening to CNN. That's why he's got a headache. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, OTO breaks down uh, lar- 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 larynx and ology. The study of okay, what, what, well, that's a that that's a different problem, Ben. Uh, that that could be for multiple reasons, right? Uh, if you're uh, well, uh, pretty much everything is Corona now. Uh, yeah, I, everything I, you have. So yeah. if if your ass hurts, I, you know, it, you could have. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> we're gonna play some more music. That's what we're gonna do. Um, Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, Moose. Yeah. This is indeed 
one big old goofy world. It is goofier every day. Ah, yeah, so nice, so nice. Tracy Chapman there, um, give me one reason. Yep. Uh, before that was Leo, Leo Maraccioli and his buddy Peter Andre, uh, Danish Pete, they're calling him, uh, or he's calling him there, was doing ACDC Thunderstruck. Kicked it off there with John Prine, and it's a big old goofy world. It is a big old goofy world. Uh, ain't no question about that. And it seems like it gets a little goofier every day. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So I... <laughs> I know. But what can you say, really? I know. I, I don't know. <laughs> really? I, I don't know. You just watch all this stuff and you're going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it seems like we're living in some kind of weird... Uh, I don't know, alternate world, I guess, maybe? Something, I don't know how to describe it. It's, 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 it's messed up, it's messed up. Yeah, it is. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, economic warfare, like Meester Bro is saying. I don't know, I, yeah, well, I, I don't know. Uh, there's definitely elements of that. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, big time. I mean, it's like they want all the small businesses to go out of business. Right. Uh, uh, that that could be part of it. That could be easily part of it. Uh, consolidation, you know, into uh, into, into all the large. I mean, just look at the fact that they shut all the small businesses down, but they left Walmart open. Right. Right. And Target. Yeah, and uh, I mean, if you could go into these big box stores and, mm-hmm. and, and grocery stores, grocery stores, whatever, and, and um. You could go into these places and uh, social distance properly. You could do that in the independent stores, too. Right, right. You know, but yep. uh, no, 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 we, we ain't allowing for that. All right, no, uh, so. Um, <laughs> I know. But there is some good news here for you, for y'all. For y'all. All right. If if this is of if this is of your interest, your need, it's a need for many folk, and uh, so I, I would say it's probably in the interest of many folk. On the okay. New York on the New York Post, Corona is not transmitted sexually. So figure that part out. I don't know why that would <laughs> that why that would be the case. But there, but during the Corona lockup, uh, sex is safe. Uh, corona can be transmitted by a simple cough, but it does not appear to transmit through semen, according to new research. Okay. Um, <laughs> an international group of scientists in the U.S. and China hmm, uh, found no evidence of Corona in semen of 34 34 adult Chinese men who had, on average, tested positive uh, for the deadly virus a month prior, according to the findings published by the journal Fertility and Sterility. All right. Uh, The authors note that their findings were admittedly based on a small sample size and a small dick size if they're all Chinese men. Um, uh, But they were still significant because they showed the virus might not show up in the testes. Now, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't there an article a couple of weeks ago uh, saying that, that, that the corona would hang out in your nuts for a while? I, I, know, yeah, I, read, I, think, yeah. I know I read an article that said that corona yeah. hang, hangs out in your nuts, but this, this one is saying the exact opposite. Like <laughs> everything else uh, that's been said out there, there's an opposite, a direct opposing opinion view that uh, both of them are calling themselves science. Our science says this. Well, ours uh, totally disagrees with you. Oh, well, what's, what should people do? Well, you got to pay attention to both. Well, you can't pay attention to both. <laughs> <laughs> so if, the, if a disease like corona were sexually transmittable, 
that would have major implications for disease prevention and could have serious consequences for a man's long-term reproductive health, according to Dr. Uh, co-author Dr. James Hodling. Hodling? All right. Uh, the new findings also set corona apart from diseases including Ebola and Zika, which can be sexually transmitted. Participants in the research, current research, however, only had mild to moderate cases of, of corona. It's possible, but yet to be confirmed, that men who contract the disease more intensely can transmit it through sex, the researcher said. It could be that a man who is critically ill with corona might have a higher viral load. Get it? Viral load. <laughs> Which could lead to a greater likelihood of infecting the semen. Uh, we just don't have the answer to that right now, but we're putting this article out. You don't have the answer, but you're putting this out here saying that, that don't worry about it, have all the sex you want. Um, while sex as an isolated action, likely can't pass along the virus. Other intimate acts, including kissing, certainly can. Uh, so, fuck all you want. <laughs> fuck all you want. No kissing allowed. I think that's that's like a hooker rule. Is that a hooker rule? Yeah, right. it is. Uh, yes. uh, but all's fair in love and corona, says government expert Dr. Fraudchi who recently gave uh, gave heart-sick isolationists the green thumb to, or the green light, excuse me, the green light <laughs> to hook up, get out there and hook up, uh, with asymptomatic Tinder matches. Really? In re isn't Tinder like Skank City? Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, Tinder matches in real life, as long as they're willing to take on some risk. Well, everything you do in life is a risk. And uh, you, you can't prevent risk. Risk risk is a, a given. Uh, if you think you're going to pre prevent risk in some manner, I, I don't know. But uh, go out there and screw your brains out. Just don't kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> no lip locking allowed. Well, wait. It doesn't say anything about eating pussy. So, you know. I, I don't know. Is, would that be? I don't know. <laughs> Take your chances, I guess. I, I guess just screwing, screwing only. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This this is this that's so fun, Grim. <laughs> whatever. That's so fun. Whatever. All right. So it, it isn't it, though. It isn't really. It's okay. Not. This this is the most important article here of the night. Uh, I think Cowboy Tech was the one who originally posted this somewhere that I saw it. Uh, it okay. It's actually been, was published way back on March 4th of this year. Viruses are pH sensitive. Do you know what that means? Yes. Do you know what fixes pH problems? Yes. What would that be? Baking soda. Baking soda. Baking soda. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. Do, 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 I, do I not rail on people to use more baking soda all the time? Yes, you do. Yes, yes I do. you do. Uh, baking soda is a uh, magic miracle stuff. Anyway, the most overlooked aspect of corona pandemic, planned, planned demic, is, yes. uh, is the fact that most viruses are pH sensitive. pH medicine offers us a key to treating viral infections that is easy, safe, and Cheap, or as they say here, inexpensive. Uh, shifting a patient's pH combined with high dosages of vitamin C is the appropriate foundation treatments for at-home and hospital care. There are many, addi right. uh, many additional treatments like vitamin D, uh, glucosoline, gl gl how do you say that word? Gl glucosoline, <laughs> whatever, iodine, and selenium, even hydrogen. But the first thing we should reach for is sodium bicarbonate, yes. a.k.a. baking soda, which offers us control of oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. Right. Research, researchers at the Massachusetts General Hospital, MGH, in the U.S. have uncovered the Achilles heel of most viruses which plague mankind are on target. 
They, there are vulnerabilities that can be exploited, but what they are looking at is not practical or helpful in our fight against viral infections. The so-called Achilles heel or vulnerable point of most viruses is pH, cell voltage and oxygen levels. pH is a measurement for voltage and oxygen saturation. Corona needs a slightly acidic pH to penetrate the cell. Yeah, yeah. You have to do your freaking baking soda every day. <laughs> Yep. Uh, the simple. And you, do you test your pH, Grim? I do not. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. I, I wouldn't even. I, I don't have a tester of any kind. Uh, yeah, no. I don't. Oh, I, okay. I'm good. I, I don't. I'm good. Anyway, the simple alkal, al, <laughs> alkalinization of the blood reduces cell susceptibility to virus. The ability of influenza virus to release its genome under a different acidic conditions is linked to medical science to the transmission of influenza virus. The threshold pH at which fusion is first observed can vary among different serotypes of membrane, protein, whatever uh, medical okay. terminology there, and uh, may correlate with virulence. The the acid stability of HA has been linked to the, which is, uh, what? Hemoagglutinin? Whatever. Uh, the the acid, <laughs> acid stability of HA is a link to the successful transmission of virus between avian and human hosts. So you wouldn't get, like, bird flu or nothing uh, if, if so. Uh, corona in ineffectivity is actually exquisitely sensitive to pH. Exquisitely sensitive to pH. The MHV A59 Hello? strain of Corona is okay. quite stable at pH 6.0, acidic, but becomes rapidly and irreversibly inactivated by brief treatment at pH 8.0, alkaline. That's what you want. Well, you want to, you want to basically be seven or a little over. Seven is neutral. A little over, alkaline. Uh, which is what's going to get what's what's the baking soda is going to give you? Human coronavirus strain uh, E two two nine E is maximally ineffective at pH six point zero in a, in infection of cells by coronavirus A five nine at pH six. Anyway, there's a bunch of data in here. I'm not going to read all this to you. It's it's technical jargon. Just bear in mind what I said. Do your baking soda. Do it daily. It's good. And if you're also using a copper vessel for that, that's another bonus for you. Or or you could do silver. Silver works great. Silver works awesome. Uh, but uh, silver, a silver vessel would cost quite a bit uh, where you can get a copper vessel for yeah. not much. But make sure you get an Ayurvedic-approved copper vessel. Okay. So, and of all so I would... You, you can get test strips, Grim. All right. Well, or like nine dollars for two hundred strips. Okay. Well, I I don't care because I I I I'm good. I'm good. I'm just saying that you can. It's such a thing exists. You can test your own pH. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Frame Slave points out that seven to seven point four is considered neutral. Uh, uh, but with the baking soda, you'll 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 be higher. Um, uh, you'll 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 be in good shape. Um, so. Okay. Anyway. Do your freaking baking soda, dudes and and dudettes. <laughs> Doodaloods. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, JJ's. Yeah, I, uh, JJ's left me a link earlier to uh, okay. some Event 201 stuff, but um, I, 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 I had to reboot and I forgot to save it. and uh, Whatever. We, we've talked about Event 201 on here. Yep. Um, Extensively, um, uh, and we all we all know about Event Two Hundred One, of course. Uh, yes, we this, have, at, we have at, talked about it at this mm -hmm. point. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, he's got some new videos or something about it, about the thing. It, it says it was actually so. If you could link link me that again, I'll include it into the blog. JJ's uh, or JJ. I don't know why mm -hmm. I keep calling you JJ's. It's because the other one 
That other JJ is from Scotland. That's why. We have two JJs <laughs> in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. All and, right. And at this, this, if there is a proper usage for what they're calling stimulus check, which should actually be called a relief check, not a stimulus check. Right. Uh, either way, if there's a proper usage for that money that you're supposed to get from the Guberman, which I haven't got yet. Uh, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Jadis, um, for that. Uh, th this article would tell you that people are doing it right. Okay. 24 million Americans using stimulus check to buy pot, alcohol, or tobacco. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know it. So, so these people know what's up, man. They're, they're, yeah, people, they do. Uh, people, are, people are freaking stressed out. And, and, yeah. Um, and and I, I got to say uh, that when, when you're stressed out, um, pot, alcohol, or tobacco has got to help you along there. That's going to make things better. So, um, uh, anyway, here you go. Uh, as millions of Americans receive their economic stimulus checks from the government, many are turning around and deciding to use them on stimulating the alcohol or tobacco industry or the weed industry. Uh, some 24 million Americans have spent some of their stimulus money on alcohol, tobacco, or drugs, according to a survey by WalletHub. Uh, but on the other hand, about a third of Americans say they will donate some or all of their stimulus checks to charity. Why? I mean, if you're getting these checks, you're probably broke in the first place, right? And and then, what charity? What what charity? Is there a, a charity? Well, they sent them out to people that were still working, Grim. So well, I, I know, but what 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 charity? What charity is going to eliminate Corona? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. All right. On a more serious note, near that was not serious. All right. On a more serious note, nearly 160 million Americans are less than three months away from running out of money. Uh, they ran out of money already. A lot of Americans. Uh, they, they, that money's been gone. They're broke. They, they got nothing. Um, so they're, they're not three months away from running out of money. They got nothing. Uh, the poll found 70 percent of Americans think only businesses with demonstrated revenue loss should be eligible for government aid. How, what do you have to demonstrate? There's no customers. I, 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 <laughs> you shut their businesses down. They're not making any money. What do you got to demonstrate? All right. Uh, while millennials are 25% more likely than baby boomer, boomer generation to say the checks should only be given in individuals who have lost income, the checks paid $1,200 to individuals. Uh, they didn't pay me goddamn thing, uh, at least not yet, uh, to individuals who have made under a certain income plus 500 bucks per kid. Some 84% of those surveyed said, they want more. Give me more. More wheat money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, Imagine that. I, I, you know, could you blame them? Uh, no. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, okay, well, you had a job yesterday, but you don't today. Why? Because the government said your business is just not important enough to stay operating. Right. And so you're out of work. So, screw you. <laughs> I just, right. I, I, I don't know how anybody's not getting that. It, 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 it seems like, well, they, they took your livelihood away from you. Um and some people think you should not be compensated for that. You're just too too bad, so sad for you. Does that make sense? Right. Does that make yeah. sense? <laughs> All right. Yeah, whatever. So, um Yeah. Uh I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the pot, right? Although yeah, the pot was part of it, you know, the pot and alcohol. All, all of it, all of it, all, all, all <laughs> yeah. this stuff, all this stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Whew. So yeah, um, it's crazy. I I don't know. I mean, I'm 
I don't think I've saved any stories here. Uh, yeah, well, I've got no. I've got dozens. Okay. We got some other stuff besides Corona to talk about here. Amazing. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how far from Corona this is. This, this Corona may be helping this along, um, but it's not directly Corona related. Skynet is near. Skynet. Okay. Speaking of Tyler Durden, Tyler Durden. Yes, this is an article off of Zero Hedge. Tyler Durden. <laughs> Skynet is near. You're familiar with Skynet, aren't you? Yes. Yes. That's the uh, artificial intelligence that took over the world and killed all the humans in Terminator. <laughs> so Skynet is near. Google scientists create artificial intelligence that evolves on its own. Oh, one of the biggest global players in artificial intelligence is Google and their high-tech brain division, has been pushing the envelope for years. Now, scientists say, working for their AutoML project, have a new paper in which they claim to be developing algorithms that can evolve on their own without human input. Even more stunning is their claim that they can induce mutations into the new generation of the algorithm, which mimics principles of the Darwinian evolution uh, theory, namely, survival of the fittest. The, so the uh, the fittest at that point, once the AI takes over, would be the AI. The AI would be the fittest, and their survival would be paramount, and human survival would be an impediment to their survival. Yeah. So... Skynet is near. The team started with one of the most basic ideas of modern AI, machine learning. Machine learning tools allow us to use algorithms to search through massive troves of data, or data mining, uh, and quickly identify patterns. But the traditional problem with this method is the element of human bias. You dirty humans and your bias. Human designed component, uh, designed components bias the search results in favor of human-designed algorithms. Huh, imagine that. Possib possibly reducing the innovation potential of AutoML. Innovation is also limited by having fewer options. You cannot discover what you cannot search for. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. To bypass this problem of those filthy humans, uh, the team wanted to develop a system by which AI could grow on its own. The team used simple math equations to develop machine learning algorithms that author 100 candidate algorithms. These candidates compete using basic machine learning tools like neural network image different, differentiation tests and the best performing algorithms then mutated or evolved via random code alteration. The system can cull through tens of thousands of algorithms every second in search of a solution while dismissing evolutionary dead ends and duplicates. Over multiple generations, the process... Multiple generations, we're not talking about human generations here. We're talking about hours, maybe. Uh, uh, minutes could could be. The process grows a library of high-performance algorithms. According to the Google team, these new algorithms have already reproduced decades worth of human-led AI discoveries in only days. So they get decades in days. Generations, yes. <laughs> wow. Perhaps most astonishingly, the new AI algorithmic evolution is able to eliminate the problem of human bias that is often introduced during data input. The auto uh, human bias put it input by humans. Hmm. The auto ML auto ML zero can essentially automatically discover unknown algorithms and develop new previously understood undiscovered AI programs without you dirty, filthy humans sticking your your fingers in the mess. 
<laughs> using only basic mathematical concepts. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I say. Somebody talking to me down here. <laughs> Somebody. What? Talking? Oh, Frumpy's talking to me down here. Okay. I'll get back to that in a second. Um, okay. Did I put that over here? Yes, I did. Uh, but on on the heels of that, or beyond that, do I have that other article? Do I, I don't know. Article. I had another article, talk, and I don't know if I, I have it in my list here. I have too many in my list. But another article talking about the fact that um, with the corona in place, this is accelerating the use of, of AI for a lot of companies because they don't have people there to do it. Um, so, so <laughs> frumpy. <laughs> don't be doing that to be doing it during the show um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Frumpy sharing stuff with me uh, uh, alright okay. um, oh here it is from Cryptogon Cryptogon okay uh, so, so Cryptogon on Cryptogon it says will Corona speed up the use of robots to replace human workers what do you think? Yes. Yes, a hundred percent it will. Um, yes. Because, well, like I said, they got no workers. They got no workers. Right. Hey, Cirque. Hey, hey, Flash. Uh, anyway. Hello, Denmark. Yeah. For better or worse. People. Denmark people. Yeah, Denmarkians. <laughs> uh, for better or worse, the robots are going to replace many humans in their jobs. Analysts say. And corona outbreak is speeding up the process. Uh, people usually say they want a human element to their interactions, but corona has changed that, says Martin Ford, a futurist who has written about the ways robots will be integrated into the economy in the coming decades. Corona is going to change consumer preference and really open up new opportunities for automation. So at this point... Because humans now realize that other humans are filthy critters that may be spreading disease to them. Uh, they're saying, yeah, just give me a robot. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need some greasy, pimple-faced kid uh, flipping my burgers or bagging my groceries. Let a robot. Right. Let a robot do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so be ready for it, all you uh, out there demanding $15 an hour. Yeah. You had a luck, man. You had a luck. So, uh, all right, we're going to play some more jams here. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to kick it off with a brand new one from Steve of the Seasick oh. Steve of the Seasick Variety. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> The clock is running. Oh, yeah. Hansel requesting the police. Imagine that. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, don't stand so close to me. Six feet apart. Get it. All right. Um, <laughs> Before that, we had the Rolling Stones brand new one there. It's called Living in a Ghost Town, and they talk about the lockup, the corona lockup, where everybody's being locked up in their homes, uh, and it's showing scenes of uh, all kinds of streets there. And the song Living in a Ghost Town, the Rolling Stones, brand new. Uh, and also the other previous to that was C6 Steve, also a, a brand new, just premiered 20 hours ago. Clock is running. Yeah. So. Uh, those, awesome. Uh, yeah, man, I tell you. <laughs> awesome. A lot of new songs coming out during this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I, I, I dig that Stones. Uh, well, I, I dig Steve, Steve too, but uh, that, that Stones uh, video, man, that's that's great stuff. Yeah, uh, it is. It's a good video. I had, I had, I'd heard the song, but I had not seen the video yet all the way through, and that was cool. Um, and then, like, my friend Adam from Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Uh-huh. He put out an L, or it's in the process of being made right now. Uh, quarantine Tangerine. <laughs> so that's coming out. 
But a lot of good music is coming out of all this. Um, oh, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's been cool to see these musicians playing out of their homes. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, Joe Scarpolino, from the band Dead Larry and Space Monkey Mafia, started a, started a uh, the live stream cover challenge on Facebook. And I mean, this thing's exploded. The uh... there's people from all over the country and all over the world on it now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so it's what's his name, Dead Larry and Space Monkey Mafia. The bands, the ba- his bands are Dead Larry. And Space Monkey Mafia. Well, okay, it's two separate bands. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. But anyway, and then Iron Star, too, which we played at their video a few weeks ago, or before this started, they released a video. The band Iron Star did. Okay. And we played that video on our on our figures. But anyway, um, he's been. Featured on the news station. He's been featured on radio stations. um, Because basically he started it right after the lockdown thing hit. Yeah. And everyone just joined. All these musicians from all over. And these are like just regular people that play guitar or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's been really cool. That's great. I found a lot of good music. uh, New music. by watching and just... uh, I'm really happy for him because it's a really cool thing that he did, that he started. And it, it just took off. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, other other places are doing the same thing. Um, I know they're doing that special in Nashville once a week where they're, you know, they have a few musicians performing at the Ryman, mm-hmm. six feet apart, whatever. But it, I don't know. I mean, if anything's been good about all this, that part's been a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's been some great, great music coming out of this. And, uh, yeah. So, terrific. Yeah, just, um, because the musicians right now are not working, obviously, none of them are. There's no concerts going on, there's no, nothing. I mean, Joe Bonamassa, he's got some pretty funny Twitter feeds every day where he he's like, he'll, he'll put out like a feed that says something like, I'm reminding myself that I'm a guitarist, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So it's been hard. I mean, it's been hard on them um, because they're not working. Right. So the good thing about the live feeds and the live streams is that people can tip them virtually. I mean, the, I think we talked about this, but Charlie Parr made like 15 grand yeah. Yeah. in an hour and a half from donations, which was awesome. It's awesome to see that. Sure. And and then so what I've been doing is buying merch. Um, I bought some CDs and a shirt from Kind Country, uh, Billy Strings, Infamous String Dusters. Haven't got all the stuff yet, but got the Kind Country stuff today. So it's been I've been trying to support them that way by that's buying great. merch. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. All right. Well. All um, right. You smoke, right? Yeah. Cigarettes? Yes, I do. So do I. And you know what? What? Hooray hooray for us. We're safe. (laughs) Oh, awesome. (laughs) France finds smoking may help you resist corona. If you don't mind. If you don't mind dying of something else they add, but come on now. Come on now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. At first they said we were at risk. <laughs> yeah, at first they did, but here you go. In a reversal of prevailing corona wisdom, a French study appears to show smokers are less at risk from the virus, affirming the result of an earlier Chinese study. The data aren't conclusive, but they're certainly surprising. Nicotine may protect smokers against corona, according to a paper published on Tuesday in the French Academy of Science Biology reports, studying 482 patients hospitalized with corona in Paris's, something I can't pronounce, hospital. Uh, The researchers found just 5% 
were daily smokers, far lower than the 25.4% of the French population who actually smoke daily. So, that's right there. Okay. All right. Uh, while the results cannot be considered conclusive evidence for nicotine protecting smokers against corona, the study uh, size is small and did not include patients in intensive care. They strongly suggest that daily smokers have a much lower probability of developing a symptomatic or serious infection with SARS-CoV-2 compared to the general population of weenies that don't want you to smoke anywhere. Uh, yeah. The, the paper's authors argue. Basically, we have 80% fewer smokers in corona patients than in the general population. 80%! Oh. <laughs> than the general population uh, of the same sex and the same age. Uh, research and researcher and internal medicine specialist Zahir Amora told France Inter on a witness day. While nicotine playing, a, playing the hero in viral epidemic affecting the lungs sounds counterintuitive. No, it doesn't. Uh, given <laughs> the known detrimental health effects of smoking, yeah, you made all that stuff up too. Uh, the, the study's conclusions are supported by more extensive data collected from the Assistance Publique Hospitalics uh, de Paris, whatever, uh, and La Pépite. Uh, <laughs> earlier this month in France. The study showed that of 11,000 patients hospitalized with the virus, just 8.5% were smokers, a significantly smaller population proportion uh, than the 25.4% of the general French population who do smoke. Unlike a Morris study, however, this one did not control for age or sex. Uh, the French study supports the results from two Chinese papers published in February, both which found the percentage of smokers among corona patients was considerably lower among the general population. There you go. All right. Uh, a later, We're good. Yeah, uh, yeah a, a later Chinese study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that only 12.6% of its 1,000 corona patients were smokers. So... Hmm. Basically, you know, 80-odd, 80, 88% of people um, are not smokers, and they, and they get corona. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it's uh, I, I just found it interesting, and, and uh, ha-ha, you anti-smoking Nazis. <laughs> in your face. Yeah, all you people say, oh, you can't smoke in a restaurant. That's bad for you. Apparently not. Apparently it's good for you. <laughs> oh god oh my god <laughs> freedom dying in Ohio well it's dying everywhere but it's yeah. certainly dying in oh, Idaho did I say Ohio? I mean Idaho Idaho you said <laughs> okay good I think okay good you said Ohio at first alright alright that's what I meant I Idaho. Said Idaho Idaho <laughs> Idaho Okay. Woman, woman faces possible prison term for holding a yard sale. I saw that. A holding prison term? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. A yard sale. Yeah. Yep. Wow. A woman in Rast Drum, Idaho, is facing the possibility of a $1,000 fine and up to six months in jail for having a yard sale. The Rast Drum Police Department said Krista Thompson violated the state's Coronavirus lockup order. God damn. The, uh, the garage sale, yard sale, oh, is not it. is not an essential business. Maybe not to you. It probably was to her, and right. should should not be open for business. The pigs said in a Facebook post on Friday. Um, Peter Thompson, Chris's husband, provided context to the Idaho Freedom Foundation. The family had a significant financial incentive to deal with the belonging of Peter's late father after the death of the family had taken over his storage unit payments, which were about $1,000 a month, the foundation said in a post on its website. Uh, the, the sum is, according to Peter, a significant burden for a one-income family with six kids. 
The Pigs Department uh, Facebook post drew plenty of criticism. Rast Drum PD should be ashamed, April Lawson said. Let people have a choice. If I choose to stop in at a yard sale, that's on me. I hope this family could find a good constitutional lawyer and sue the police department for their disregard to our constitution of the state of Idaho, the constitution of the U.S. Uh, thank you for keeping our streets safer, huh? And ridding us of this dangerous criminal enterprise, Justin Crotrell said. I hope you'll go after those rogue lemonade stands and kids peddling their school fundraisers next. We must keep uh, keep our streets clean of anything resembling a happy, thriving, productive society. You guys earned a gold star. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh God. So uh, yeah. So uh, there's there's that uh, that ridiculous nutballness. But up there in the state of Cowboy Tech and Hal Anthony. Yeah, the the yard sale thing, that's kind of ridiculous. Oh, it's totally ridiculous. I noticed that people aren't having them around here, so they're apparently not having them because of this thing. That must be in the, the lockdown order. Yeah. Because this is the time people would start having them right now. And... But like you said, Grim, people are out of work. She's trying to make a little bit of money. Oh, well, just shut it down. You don't have to arrest her and threaten jail time christ right you know just shut it, it, it you know just shut it down why are you gonna be a dick you know because they're dicks <laughs> they are they're dicks that's why yeah it makes sense right yep. yeah yeah anyway two, up, two, two and two together right there exactly uh, up there in the state of cowboy tech and hal anthony oregon yeah. mm -hmm. these people are nuts now i don't know how accurate this poll is Okay. But according to this, 82% of Oregonians support home imprisonment order, or uh, stay-at-home order. Yeah, I had it right the first time, home imprisonment order. Yeah. Um, <laughs> new yep. data, new data, 82%. <laughs> wow. New data shows that nearly four out of five Oregonians, that's more than four out of five Oregonians, if it's 82%, you idiots, who's writing this article? Oh. <laughs> anyway, more than four out of five, not nearly, uh, support the state's stay-at-home order. Data from DMH Research also shows that the support is broad across political parties and parts of the state. Over 900 people over the age of 18 were polled. 82% they support in home imprisonment, being being locked away because the state says it's good for you. Well, 16% uh, oppose the order and 2% are clueless. Uh, support for the stay-at-home order is high across all political parties. Among Democrats, support is around 95%. Just lock me up, please, Mr. State. And 72% amongst Republicans. Wow, yeah, you guys are really small government there, aren't you, Republicans? Isn't that what you're always <laughs> what you're always preaching? Small government, seventy-two percent say let the state lock you up for nothing, and seventy wow. seventy-seven percent for non-affiliated voters. Other topics addressed in the polling are uh, the level of concern for Corona in the community and conditions necessary for reopening the state. DMH research says uh, quotas and statistical weighting by gender, age, education, race area of the state and political affiliation were considered uh, to match that of Oregon's general population. There's a link to the findings if you should decide to go and look there at that goofy ass. Inf what is wrong with these people? <laughs> Good question, Grim. Why, why do you support being thrown in prison, even if it's your own home, for nothing? For not afraid. afraid for existing. <sighs> They're afraid yeah. of the virus. All right. Now, I talked about earlier that the uh, Americans were uh, using their money to buy. Oh, what the hell's going on here? Oh, I got to do this. Um, what, what? What is this? Click, click, click. 
you damn thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, I talked about earlier uh, that uh, Americans are buying their money to use uh, to, use to it uh, to buy pot, alcohol, and um, what else? Weed. I said that pot, alcohol, and something else. Tobacco. Oh, tobacco. Right. Okay. What else are they using? Their stimulus checks, their their relief checks to buy. Porn. Bitcoin. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Americans are taking that, that phony paper and they're buying Bitcoin. Yep. Uh, this is on Forbes.com here. Um, it says, although the Bitcoin price declined sharply in response to the WHO declaration of Corona as a pandemic last month, interest in the crypto asset from the general public is not lost. In fact, some Americans are taking their $1,200 stimulus checks and using them to buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Buy Dogcoin! Uh, sharp moves. Uh, Dogecoin, excuse me. People don't, <laughs> people don't, I always call it Dogcoin. People don't like that. Anyway, uh, Sharp moves in the Bitcoin price tend to be an incredible marketing tool for the crypto asset, and a number of exchanges reported increased account activity when the price dropped in the middle of March. Additionally, the halving event, I guess it halved, if you're not familiar with, with what halving is in cryptocurrency, that's when the rewards for mining a block are cut in half. So okay. if you, you used to get 10 Bitcoins per, per, per block solved. Now you only get five. So, and that happened recently. So um, in Bitcoin, it's hap it happens in all cryptocurrencies, but uh, Bitcoin ones are the biggest because they're the, they're the daddy of it all. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so um, one industry CEO has referred to the circumstances around the upcoming having uh, it's happened already, didn't it? I thought it already happened. As a perfect storm for Bitcoin, while former Facebook executive, Cam, some name I can't pronounce, is indicated that there is now an increased chance of a single Bitcoin could eventually be worth millions of dollars. Of course, that could be a reflection on the dollar more than the Bitcoin, as they're dumping out trillions of dollars out of nothing, uh, reducing yes. the value of every dollar. So that yep. that may be more of a reflection on the value of the dollar than the, the than the, the the value of the Bitcoin there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I found that kind of interesting. Uh, that uh, and, and it's it's up there on Forbes. You know, uh, they're a, they're a money money outlet. Uh, yep. So uh, yeah, what time we got here? Eleven eleven. All right, let's play another set, and then. Uh, all right. And, and then, uh, then we'll talk about other stuff. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Enjoy, people. Yeah, absolutely. I think this first one is actually a cowboy tech request. The Youngbloods. <laughs> Sammy Hager in the circle. They're uh, covering Bob Marley's Three Little Birds. Oh, man, that's going to be great. <laughs> Love that. They, they just put that out there today. Um, <laughs> or yesterday, I guess. Uh, anyways, <laughs> thanks, Sammy and boys. Appreciate that. Before that, Haley Reinhardt. Oh, baby. Uh, covering Buffalo Springfields for what it's worth. And we kicked it off with the Young Bloods for Cowboy Tech there. Doing Get Together. It's a great idea. Get Together. Quit messing about. Quit messing about hanging out there in your own little private cells. Uh, um... Dang it. Let me try and come back see if I can do this here without, uh, no, it's not going to let me. All right, I'll just have to try and remember. Yeah, buttheads. All right. <laughs> oh, look at that. I have a phone call. And it's the Mighty Moose Girl. I'm back. She is back. Ah. <sighs> So, anyway, um, what was I talking about? Uh, the stuff, everything. Oh, the music. I was talking about the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, some great stuff there, man. 
We had Haley and Sammy Hagar and yeah, excuse me, just good stuff. Good, good, good uh, lockup music. That's right. Yep. In case you're unaware, quit call, quit calling this a lockdown. Start calling it what it is. It's a lockup. You're locked up against yep. your against your will. Yep. Some people are liking it though. Some people are like saying, "Oh, I kind of like this." Yeah, you those, those, those are I don't like people anyway. So you know, it's like really realize what you're saying. You those, realize what you're saying. Those, those Oregonians are digging it. You know? Do you like what you're saying? I mean, do you, do you like, know what you're saying? Do you, do you like being <laughs> in prison, being imprisoned? Right. Yeah. yeah. No. So it's, no, it's not a lockdown. It's not a stay at home. It's not a safer at home. It's imprisonment. Yes, it is. House arrest. Yeah, house arrest. Basically. Because why? Because you're a freaking human. You're a human, so you're, you, therefore... You're bad. You will be locked away. Yep. Because you're scum. <laughs> You you breathe, and therefore you. Uh, mm. uh, all right. So I, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'll give it to you because. Okay. You you really you're gonna you're gonna find a cure. You're gonna find a a vaccine or a cure. I don't think so. Jerusalem Post, jpost dot com. Mm-hmm. Coronavirus has mutated into at least 30 different strains. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to find you're going to find a cure, hey. all right. Yeah, sure you are. Uh the study carried out by Professor Li Lunjian and colleagues at some place in China uh published a non-peer-reviewed paper released on a website uh Med rxiv.org on Sunday. The new study has found that the novel corona has mutated into at least 30 different variations. The results showed that the medical officials have vastly underestimated the overall ability of the virus to mutate in findings that different strains have affected different parts of the world, leading to potential difficulties in finding a cure. Uh, the study... Uh, Let's see, carried out by this guy. You already just said that. Why are you repeating yourself here? Uh, <laughs> Lee, Lee's team analyzed the strains from 11 randomly chosen corona patients in Hangzhou, uh, where there have been 1,264 reported cases, and then tested how efficiently they could infect and kill cells. More than 30 different mutations were detected, of which 19 were previously undiscovered. SARS-CoV-2 has acquired mutations capable of substantially changing its pathogenicity. Pathogenicity, I like that word. Uh, <laughs> the, the team discovered that some of the mutations could lead to functional changes in the virus spike protein. The South China Morning Post reported, spike protein is the protein that the corona uses to attach itself to your cells. Uh, Lee's team infected cells with corona strains, carrying different mutations, of which most aggressive strains were found to generate as much as 270 times as much viral load as the weakest strains. The aggressive strains also killed the human cells the fastest, and therefore would kill the humans uh, the fastest. So, um, cure? No, not so much. It, 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 it kind of sounds to me... Similar in a way to like, um, uh, you know how that AI article where they're talking about the AI evolving on its own. Yes. Um, this 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 thing, whatever it is, if it even exists, appears to have that AI built into it. Apparently. Uh, so, <laughs> cure? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody's claimed the million to prove that it's existed, Rob. Um, <laughs> two million, two million in gold uh, is what it was. Yeah, two million in gold uh, for anybody that can prove that it actually exists. 
<laughs> nine. Wow. Of, um, what is what is that? That's uh, nine. Uh, uh, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, 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 I don't know, man. It, it's, I don't either. It's it, it's all kind of messed up stuff. So. Yeah. Um. Pretty much. I know. It's crazy. Absolutely nuts. Yep. Oh, what did I say? 13, 13, and 4, 3, 17. Okay. <laughs> Don't mind me. Still in a little mass. Not doing it too well. Um. <laughs> uh, just remember 17. That's the number I want you to remember. 17. 17. Which, All right. Uh, which means... Uh, on the edge of 17. Which means, no, 43. That means 43. 43. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So the liars over at CDC put out this, this thing here. Okay. Uh, on Reuters, uh, via Reuters, on Trust.org. Uh, the CDC chief warns second corona wave may be worse. Arriving with flu. So, yeah, we got that to look for. So, let's say that maybe at some point in time here, um, they um, decide to go ahead and un uh, release us from our prison cells and, and go out there and start doing stuff, you know? Um, yeah. So, what happens when it comes back? Right. And it's worse. Yeah. They gotta shut everything down again? <laughs> Probably. Second wave of the coronavirus is expected to hit the U.S. next winter and could strike much harder than the first because it would likely arrive at the start of the flu season. The director for CDC uh, warned on Tuesday there's a possibility that the assault uh, of the virus on our nation next winter will actually be even more difficult than the one we just went through. Well, the one we just went through wasn't jack shit. <laughs> uh, CDC director Robert Redfield. Redfield, isn't he like the uh, one of the creepy guys from Frankenstein? Or is that Redfield? I don't know. Red, maybe that's Redfield. This, this guy's Redfield. Maybe his brother. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> as, the, as the current outbreak continues to taper off, as shown by a recent decline in hospitalization. Uh, rates and other indicators of Florida uh, need to prepare for a probable resurgence in the months ahead. Uh, we're going to have the flu epidemic and the coronavirus epidemic at the same time, he said, and the combination would put even greater strain on the nation's healthcare system than the first outbreak, which is apparently nothing since they're closing hospitals because there's not enough people in them. Um, right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Wow. Uh, the virus, which causes a highly contagious and potentially fatal, what's well, not potentially, I mean, you know, but respiratory illness dubbed COVID-19 emerged last year. Yeah, we know all that shit. We don't have to talk about that. All right. Well, right. whatever. Um, so I, people won't put up with another lockdown. I don't, I don't think. I mean, even even all these people now that are supporting this freaking lockdown shit. I don't, I don't think they're going to put up with another one. I um, hope not. I, I mean, how stupid are... Well, that's a dumb question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah how stupid are... Uh, very. Um, <laughs> wow. Oh, God. Uh, I know. All right, that was that one. All right. Uh, why do I have this up here? <laughs> Sometimes people don't put titles in this thing, and I can't tell what it's going to be. Oh, right. here it is. Here it is. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can get Jackson some work. Okay. Specially trained dogs are being tested for sniffing out corona cases. Oh, okay. <laughs> go, go, go stick wow. Your, go stick. Go stick your nose up that guy's butt and see if he's got corona. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, I don't even want to make of that. Um, <laughs> uh, Hannah, Hannah, you want a job? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So specially trained medical detection dogs could be the solution to the crisis and the lack of testing uh, that many countries are facing during the corona pandemic. Dogs are capable of sniff testing 750 people an hour. And that kind of, oh. that can't be good for the dog. Uh, no. According to the head of the nonprofit which trains medical dogs, the potential for the dogs to respond to corona is being explored by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. The LS, what? <laughs> uh, right, the LSHTM. Uh, <laughs> uh, the LSHTM published a press release in March describing an experimental project which is seeking to establish whether dogs can reliably detect COVID-19 in the way they can other disease. Well, if there's 30 deaths, whatever. Uh, the, the plan to train six dogs if the initial trials are sec successful, according to an April 17th report, which was uh, last Friday, uh, the, the training involves dogs being uh, given corona, uh, being given coronavirus patients' face masks to sniff. What? Okay, uh, to what? The, they're 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 giving dogs the coronavirus patients' wow. face masks to sniff to discover if COVID-19 has a unique odor that can be identified by a dog's enhanced sense of smell. Uh, it will take several weeks of experimentation before it will all be known if dogs are able to identify corona. Uh, James Logan, head of the Department of Disease Control for, er, at the LSHTM, said, It's early days for COVID-19 odor detection. We do not know if COVID-19 has a specific odor yet. But we know that other respiratory diseases change our body odor. So there's a chance. If it does, dogs will be able to detect it. This new diagnostic tool, they're calling your dog a tool, uh, could revolutionize our response to corona. Uh, <laughs> medical detection dogs are already used to help screen for a range of conditions, including cancer, malaria, and Parkinson's. They can smell crazy. Oh, no, that's Parkinson's. That's not, that's not, that's different. All right. Uh, Claire Guest, CEO of Medical Detection Dogs Charity, told the, the mayor, uh, there have already been many fantastic achievements in the dog's work to detect human disease. Uh, that's terrific. <laughs> Get your dog out there sniffing them corona butts. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> corona butts are us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, I'm going to report a story here that nobody cares about. Well, okay. that few people care about. Okay. Because it's not corona. It's not corona, so nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> like a foss. Well, you know, like a boss, like a foss. Foss. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Free open source software. Foss. Uh, oh, okay. Ubuntu 20.04 Focal Fossa set for release as... Canonical's next open source Linux distro. So it's exciting for certain people. And most other people are going, what? Who cares? What the hell are you talking about that shit? Uh, anyway, so this is coming out. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and, and it will it will stop. What the hell happened there? Uh, it will uh, affect me directly because um, Mint will upgrade theirs from uh, the, the current version. Uh, to the new, to a newer version, probably not this version. This this version will come along later. But uh, Canonical's latest iteration for the popular Linux distribution will be released Thursday, which would have been yesterday, because this came out Wednesday. Uh, after months of developer testing and daily builds, uh, millions of Ubuntu fans are awaiting the release of the long-term support version of Ubuntu. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, named Focal Fossa after the Madagascan feline. <laughs> anyway, that's all you really need to know. Is a uh, uh, new Ubuntu coming out? So hooray, 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 hooray! Okay. For, for us geeks and dorks and dweebs and people that like non-Windows based um, operating systems. Where am I at here? We got time? Yeah, I got time. I got. Yep. Five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Remember, I said 17. That, that leaves 43. 17. So that leaves 43. 43. Yep. So, oh, four minutes. I have four minutes. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, since somebody was talking about this already there in the chat, we'll talk about this, too. Uh, okay. Because this is also exciting to me and could directly affect me and my bottom line, depending on where I'm at in my stockpile at that point in time. On MarketWatch.com, gold $3,000? Question mark. This pattern suggests a 70% surge from here makes sense. Hooray. Yeah. Bank, Bank of America on Wednesday raised its price target on gold from $2,000 an ounce all the way up to $3,000, a 50% increase. What's more... That predicted level is more than 50% above a nine-year-old record of $1,921. So, yes, B of A and analysts are bullish on gold, to put it mildly. Why? The prospects of endless monetary expansion, thank you, Federal Reserve, from central banks uh, to limit the economic damage, which they're actually going to do the opposite by pr printing all that money, uh, creating all that new fake money, they're not going to prevent economic damage. They're going to create far more economic damage from the corona pandemic. Uh, other potential drivers, of course, are gold's appeal as an inflationary edge or hyperinflation, as it may be, as well as the safe haven against a market crash. Uh, just as central banks are socializing risk, <laughs> meaning everybody pays for the risk. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, they, they get all the profit. Um, they, they don't socialize the profit, just the risk. Um, in right. financial markets, governments are increasing their spending like never before during peacetime. Oh, but it's a war, didn't you hear? It's a war against an invisible enemy. Uh, B of A's Michael Widmer wrote in the notes to clients, investment demand has correlated strongly with gold prices in recent years, and we expect precisely this group of buyers to drive gold prices higher. Get on it. Get to it. Right. <laughs> we can only hope. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah, 150. That's that's a that's a reasonable electric bill. Uh, I well, I mean, it's I pay as low as like a hundred some months during like the the fall and the spring when there's when it's not too hot or too right, cold. Right, right. Uh, but in, in the summer, it's well over 150. In the winter, it's around 150. But, yeah. Uh, AC takes a lot of juice. So yeah, uh, it does. Yeah. Wow. So 150 for an electric bill, what are you doing? Of course, you live in a trailer, so. Right. Uh, you know, it should be less for you. <laughs> it should be, yeah. 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 All right, we're going to do a last set here. Okay. And we'll be back. we got stuff to tell you after that, so don't run off anywhere. I know some of y'all like to run off when you hear Black Betty start, but hang around. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, Leroy, he's hungry. Yeah, he, is, he needs to be fed. He needs to be fed. Oh, Black Betty indeed. That there was soil with their version of Black Betty. Uh, before that, we had uh, four Benoit, who is apparently not here now. A four band wall, MC Hammerin. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. <laughs> Before that, for the Moose Girl, Summertime with Billy Strings and Marcus King. Uh, great guys, both of those guys, man. They're just freaking awesome. Yeah. And, very talented. Uh, yeah, we kicked it off there with Feeding Leroy and the Tennessee Devil. And, and I got to ask you one thing, one question. Yeah. I saw no banjo on that stage. No. They they was, they they say they're a bluegrass band and they have no banjo. Some some don't. All bluegrass bands are different, Graham. No, Benoit is not Slim Jim. No, <laughs> hell no, no he's not. He's a totally different band. Yep, totally maybe, different person. There may be something about people named Ben. I'm not gonna say. Yeah, I yeah. 
I know what you mean. Yeah. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for us here tonight. Yep. Uh, tomorrow, you got the dark table at uh, 2 p.m. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, 2 p.m., yep. Which is noon my time. Uh, anyway, uh, so it'll be Flash and maybe Grammy. Who knows? She was on uh, on, on Tuesday with him on, on the uh, Perfect World show. So that'd yep. be cool. That'd be cool. And maybe somebody else. Who knows? Um, bend over, yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll be on Sunday at normal time, about uh, noon, yeah, here playing the blues. We're playing trivia in the chat. Good old fun, fun, fun. And uh, then we'll be followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up that big old can of whip ass. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Saturday night. What? I almost forgot. Saturday night is uh, Prince. Oh, yeah. Uh, Prince and uh, Zippix uh, with uh, the, the Power Hour. So check them out. They're on at 11 tomorrow night. So, yeah, how about that? Yeah, check it out. <laughs> all right. Check the schedule on Real Liberty Media. Thank you all for tuning in. It's been a wonderful. Yep. I had a fun time. Yeah, I did too. Have a great week. Stay away from people. <laughs> Peace. Peace. So I heard you cough. I heard you cough. Is that a corona cough? <laughs> no. Bye, y'all. <laughs> no, it's not.